Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, we'll discuss bottom pruning and mulching pepper plants. So bottom pruning and mulching are two techniques that we like to use in our garden to help improve the overall health of our plants, but also make the garden a little more aesthetically pleasing and a little bit less work. So today I'll discuss both of these in detail, explain why we do both of them and show you how to do it yourself. But before I start, check us out on Instagram. We're getting close to the 6,000 follower mark and we'd really like to reach 10,000 before the end of this year. So help us get there. Check out our exclusive pictures of this year's pepper grow over on Instagram at Pepper Geek. So let's start with bottom pruning. Essentially, the goal is to remove foliage from the first six inches of the main stem. So from the bottom of the plant up about six inches, we want to remove those leaves. Now you may have seen our topping video about pruning the tops of our pepper plants when they're relatively young. And this is a different process. We do this type of bottom pruning when the plants are about 10 to 12 weeks old or even a little bit older as they're transplanted outside into their final location. So why do we like to do this? The number one reason is to avoid pathogens from entering your plant. There are many soil-based pathogens like bacteria and diseases, and leaves are a perfect entry point into your plant as an organism. The stems of pepper plants are very strong and they develop a woody texture to them, and it's very unlikely that a pathogen will enter through the stem. However, leaves can become damaged. That offers the perfect entry point into your plant, and your plant can become diseased or infected. So by effectively raising the plant off of the ground a few inches by removing those bottom leaves, we reduce the likelihood of this happening. The other reason is that it makes it a lot easier to water your plants. We always recommend watering at the base of the plant, and if you're using a watering can by removing some of the lower leaves, it makes it a lot easier to access right at the base of the plant where the water is needed. So again, I have our Bootjalokia solid gold plant here as an example. We've done a little bit of bottom pruning already on this plant, but there is more to be done and I'll show you exactly how we do it. So as you can see, there are several leaves within the first six inches of this plant, large older leaves that look healthy and they're definitely helping the plant to photosynthesize right now, but there is plenty of foliage established above that point so we don't have to worry about removing some of these leaves and it's actually gonna benefit the plant more than it will harm it. There are also several shoots around the base of this plant that are below the six inch mark, but we're not going to remove those at this point. We're gonna let those develop until they are established and then we can remove some of the leaves that are lower on those branches. The reason you don't wanna prune away these shoots is because they are going to develop into a branch that will then produce more peppers for you. And we wouldn't wanna remove the possibility of more peppers, so of course we're gonna leave those alone and let them develop. Once they're established and strong, we can remove some of the leaves of those branches that are down low. So today we're just gonna remove these lower leaves. As you can see, we have one here. That's about two inches off of the surface. And make sure your hands are clean. You don't wanna go introducing pathogens into your plant inadvertently through this because you are wounding the plant temporarily. You can also use pruning shears or a pair of clean scissors. So be careful not to damage anything else in the process here. But as you can see, this leaf is about two and a half, three inches off of the bottom. And we're just gonna remove it as close to the stem as possible. One down, about five or six to go. So another one back here. See that? This one as well. And again, just be careful not to damage any of those young stem shoots. They're commonly referred to as sucker shoots on tomato plants. I guess you could consider them the same thing here on a pepper plant, but whereas on a tomato plant, you would prune those away, we wanna leave them on our pepper plant to get the biggest harvest possible. So one more leaf, I think I'll just remove this one here. And there you go. Not that painful. There's still plenty of plant remaining, as you can see, not that big of a deal. And so with this plant, it was very easy. It was obvious which leaves we should remove, but with other varieties of peppers, especially some of the annuum species peppers, the plants can grow very tight, compact sets of leaves, making it really hard for you to decide which to remove. And so in those cases, I recommend just not bottom pruning. Don't worry about it so much. If the plant has a natural tendency to grow low and bushy, just allow it to do so. For example, we had the Bulgarian carrot plant last year. We actually had two of them. Both of them grew just the same. They barely reached 12 inches tall and most of the foliage was very low down to the ground. It was messy, they got dirt on the leaves, but we still ended up getting some peppers despite not bottom pruning. So those minor wounds should heal very quickly on your pepper plant. And now with the plant at this stage, we are ready to mulch. Okay, so moving on to mulching. You're probably very familiar with the idea of mulch. 
It's very common in landscaping around houses and around your shrubs, perennial plants, etc. But why would we do this with our pepper plants? Well, the first reason is very similar to why we bottom prune, and that is to avoid soil from splashing onto our plant and introducing pathogens into our pepper plants. By providing a thick layer of mulch around the base of your plants, when it rains or when you water, however you irrigate, the mulch will dampen the splashing of the water and prevent it from getting onto your plant's leaves. The second reason we mulch is that it retains moisture in the soil by preventing evaporation when it's hot. So when you water on bare soil, the first inch or so of that soil dries out very quickly when it is sunny or very hot or when the relative humidity is low. And so mulch again provides a little bit of a dampening, preventing that soil from drying out and keeping it more evenly moist over time. It also acts as a barrier for temperature, so when you have colder temperatures in the beginning of the year or later in the season, it will help keep the root systems a more consistent temperature. And lastly, mulching helps prevent weeds from sprouting. So in the beginning of the season, if you work your soil, you're bringing dormant weed seeds to the surface to begin germinating. By putting down a thick layer of mulch, you're preventing those seedlings from getting very far by blocking out the sunlight. And so as you can see, there are many reasons to mulch. It's effective in a potted plant like this. We don't always mulch these plants just because we hand water them for the most part, but it's still gonna provide the benefits that I mentioned here, but it definitely provides more benefit in a garden bed, a raised bed, or a garden plot. We mulch everywhere around the base of our plants and in the walking paths to avoid weeds from sprouting. And when you use an attractive mulch like this, it just gives the garden a better atmospheric feel in my opinion. So how do we mulch our pepper plants? Well, we use this here, what I've been holding for the last couple minutes. This is finely chopped straw, and this is generally used for seeding your lawn, but it's perfect as a mulch for your peppers. It's safe, biodegradable, it's finely chopped as you can see, so it's very easy to get right up to the base of your plants. But you could also use grass clippings if you mow your Lawn, that's a great free resource that you can use to mulch around your plants. Some people like to use black plastic. It's a great way to suppress weeds, but I think it's a little bit more ugly. It's definitely great on a larger scale. While I'm on the topic of mulch types, you may want to avoid using wood chips if possible. Wood chips can reduce the amount of nitrogen in the first few inches of soil. So if you're planting young plants with relatively shallow root systems, wood chips can actually reduce the available nitrogen in the first few inches of soil. It's not as big of a deal for older perennial plants or if you have an overwintered pepper with a more established root system. System. But if you have wood chips and you're planning on using them for mulch, it's a very good idea to put down a very thin layer of compost around your plants before you put the wood chips on them, just to add a bit of nitrogen to offset the effects of the wood chips. Okay, so how do we apply this? It's very simple. Just apply a two to three inch layer of mulch around the base of your plants. You want it to be nice and thick if you can. It's really gonna help with that weed suppression. And the thicker the layer, the better the barrier is between your soil and your plants. Now you can kind of just dump it in there and then spread it around evenly to evenly compact it around the plant. And then I'll give it a good water so that wind and other environmental elements won't displace it. After the season's over and it's time to clean up, you can either work this right into the soil or you can rake it up off the surface of your soil and put it into your compost bin. And so that's it. Now this plant is fully prepared and ready to go back outside and continue growing great for us. We have it staked, we have it bottom pruned, and we have it mulched. So we don't have to worry about weeds, we don't have to worry about wind, we don't have to worry about pathogens entering the lower foliage on the plants. All we have to worry about is watering, feeding our plants properly, and waiting for harvests. One last thing I want to address with the mulching, if you want to side dress your plants with amendments or fertilizer that is not water soluble, you'll just have to move the mulch aside, apply your side dressing how you normally would on the surface of the soil, water a bit, and then cover it with the mulch again. Again, in potted plants, mulching isn't always necessary. You know, you're getting seed-free soils for the most part, so you don't have to worry about weed seedlings starting up in your soil. And even if you do, it's not that hard to pluck them away, but it still provides the benefit of preventing splashing when it rains. So we still like to do it in some cases. Don't forget to check us out on peppergeek.com. We just posted our most comprehensive article about how to grow peppers from start to finish. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link down below. Thanks for watching Pepper Geek and I'll see you next time.